Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. In the matchless name of Yahoshua Mashiach, this is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. And we're delighted to be able to come to you once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This has come out of her, my people, broadcast with your host, Reginald M. Graham. I'm just a voice crying in this end time wilderness, preparing the way of Yahweh, making straight paths for our Messiah, Yahoshua Mashiach. The Bible tells us in the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations and then shall the end come. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that verse is being fulfilled in your very ears on this day. Now, I want to warn you, this broadcast is not for the faint of heart. We bring the truth raw and uncut. If you are a truth seeker, if you love the truth raw and uncut, you have tuned in to the right broadcast. We don't beat around the bushes. We don't tiptoe through the tulips, ladies and gentlemen, but we let the chips fall where they may. And we do not apologize for declaring the truth. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get right into our message, amen, on this day. I witnessed recently online one of the most sickening and disgusting things of the entirety of my life. An African-American woman wanted to surprise her 16-year-old daughter on her birthday. When the mother arrived home, she told her daughter she had a surprise for her. So she blindfolded her daughter and walked her outside. Then the mother told her daughter to take off the blindfold. When her 16-year-old daughter took off her blindfold, she behold an almost, almost brand new black Tesla with an envelope full of money on the windshield. When the daughter saw the Tesla, she began to immediately complain saying, I didn't want an electric car. I didn't want a Tesla. But she wanted a Mercedes. The mother began to say to her daughter that she was so ungrateful. But her daughter said that it was her golden celebration, her 16-year-old birthday, and that you are going to buy me a Tesla? On my birthday, then the mother told her daughter to look in the envelope on the window shield of the Tesla. So her daughter opened the envelope. Inside the envelope, there was $1,600. And the daughter said, is this all you are going to give me on my 16th year old birthday? Only $1,600? What's wrong with you? And she dropped the money and said that she did not want the money or the Tesla and stormed into the house. Now, I'm not making this up, ladies and gentlemen. This is online. This literally happened recently. This Tesla was worth at least twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars, perhaps even more because it was in mint condition. You can see that this mother spoiled this monster. After her daughter behaved in this manner, she should have took the money and took the Tesla back to the car dealership where she purchased it. But instead, the mother apologized to her daughter. And both the mother and the daughter went to the Mercedes dealership to buy her daughter a Mercedes. But the daughter wanted a 23 or a 22 Mercedes. But her mother said she would not buy her a 22 or a 2023 or 2022 Mercedes. But she would only buy her a 2019 or 18 Mercedes. And you know these vehicles are expensive, ladies and gentlemen. The daughter said 
that if she could not get the 23 or 22, she did not want any of the Mercedes. I never witnessed an African-American youth that was so ungrateful and appreciative in the entirety of my life. I could not believe what I was beholding, ladies and gentlemen. It was extremely sickening and disgusting for me to witness. I blame the parent for this girl's behavior. You can see that this girl's mother ruined her like so many parents have ruined their children. This is what happens when you spoil children and neglect disciplining and allowing children to control and, ma and manipulate you. This is the byproduct. Today, children are out of control. And it's nobody's fault but their parents. Today, parents raise children like they are their brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this situation that I shared with you, with this, uh, this ungrateful, unthankful 16-year-old uh, girl, ladies and gentlemen, was a microcosm. This is happening all over the planet, especially in the West, ladies and gentlemen. Bless Yahweh for the truth. Today, children are out of control, and it's nobody's fault but their parents. Today, parents raise children like they are their brothers and sisters. That's what type of relationship they have. They have brother and sisters relationships. Matthew 7 and verse 17, Yahushua declared, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit, ladies and gentlemen. Praise Yahweh. Metaphorically, our children are our fruit. The state of the tree determines the state of the fruit. The apple don't fall too far away from the tree. A person's behavior reflects his character. Even a child's actions and conduct reveal what they are like. Proverbs 20 and verse 11 declares, Even a child is known by his doings, whether his work be pure and whether it be right. You can tell a lot about a child from their behavior and a lot about their parents as well. Why do you think most people today that are 45 and above have better work ethics, are more respectful, productive, disciplined, etc.? Because they were raised by the silent and baby boomer generations. These two generations discipline their children. The old school generations, ladies and gentlemen, they discipline their children. These new school generations are very immature. I'm so grateful that I was uh, raised by old school parents, ladies and gentlemen. Now, they, they didn't know Yahweh. Glory to Yahweh. We, I wasn't raised in a uh, uh, a religious home, ladies and gentlemen. We 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 went to church um, on Christmas, maybe Easter. Amen. That was about it. And I probably witnessed my dad going to church one time in the entirety of my life. But one thing I can tell you about my parents, they didn't have much knowledge about uh, Yahweh. But my parents did not believe in sparing the rod or may I say extension cord, ladies and gentlemen, they put it on us. Glory to Yahweh. They couldn't, amen. They, I tell you what, and I appreciate that because they kept me from joining gangs. They kept me from getting on uh, a lot of drugs. They kept me from getting young girls pregnant, ladies and gentlemen. They kept me out of the jail. They kept me out of the grave.
I didn't like it when they did discipline me, but I'm so grateful today for my parents. Amen. For the uh, discipline that I received uh, from my parents, ladies and gentlemen. But, but these new school generations are very immature. The problem with our world, uh, with generational acts, uh, um, the millennials and, and, and generational Z, etc., ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 these are immature, uh, very immature. Generations, ladies and gentlemen, Generation X, Millennials, these new school generations are very immature. The problem with our world, you have adults with children minds, having children and raising children. Children are raising children today. You have adults, ladies and gentlemen, but they have childlike minds. 1 Corinthians 13 and 11 declares, when I was a child, I speak as a child, I thought as a child, I understood as a child, and when I became a man, I put away childish things. Ladies and gentlemen, most of these parents today have not put away childish things. They are children themselves. They think like children, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, they speak like children. They understand like children. They respond like children. They react like children. Every generation has become more immature. Every generation. Every generation is becoming more and more immature. Parents don't act like parents anymore. They act like children. This is why children are becoming more out of control. Juvenile delinquency, youth incarceration, crime, violence, teenage pregnancy, teenage drug use. All of these things are intensifying. They are in increasing, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible tells us in the book of Proverbs, chapter 30. And I want to begin reading with verse number 11. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse number 11. Listen what the word of Yahweh, a man, says. There is a generation that curses their father. We're witnessing that generation even as I speak. And do us not bless their mother. They're, they're ungrateful, un, they're unthankful, unappreciative, just like I've shared this story with you in the beginning of my broadcast there's a generation that appear in their own eyes they think they are wiser than the elderly they know more than the elderly they said oh we uh, the old people we don't know nothing ladies and gentlemen there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet are not washed from their filthiness. They can't even see their filthiness, ladies and gentlemen. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. Proud. Oh, they heady, they high-minded. And their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Isaiah 3 verse 12 declares, As for my people, children are their oppressors. Did y'all hear that? Children are their oppressors. And women rule over them. O oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Isaiah 3 and 5 declares, And the people shall be oppressed, everyone by another, and everyone by his neighbor. Listen to this. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient. Ancient here in this context means the elderly. Today, the youth have no respect for the elderly. And they behave themselves proudly against the elderly. 
They don't listen to the counsel of elderly because they think they are wiser than the elderly. Their parents and the elderly cannot tell them nothing. Job 12 and verse 12 declares, with the ancient is wisdom. Or with the elderly, there's wisdom. And in length of days, understanding. The longer you're on this earth, you should get better understanding. Remember the Bible tells us Solomon's sons, Rehoboam, when he uh, came on the throne, ladies and gentlemen, he sought the counsel of the young men that grew up with him, but he did not seek the counsel of the age, the elderly men, amen, to grow up with his father. And because he took the counsel of the young man, they steered, steered him in the wrong direction. And because of this, the whole kingdom was divided because he listened to the counsel of of the young men, ladies and gentlemen. He should have listened to the counsel of the elderly, the wise. Second Timothy 3 verses 1 through 2 declares, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Here in, in uh, Second Timothy chapter 3, it speaks of 21 different characteristics of man in the last days or the end times. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Verse 2. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, selfishness, covetous, greedy, boasters, ladies and gentlemen, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful. Man, isn't the word of Yahweh accurate? Look how unthankful that girl was who mother bought her a Tesla and gave her $1,600. But she did not want the gifts. She wanted a Mercedes. She said, you're going to give me a Tesla and $1,600 on my golden celebration. Uh, my, uh, I turned 16 years on my 16-year-old birthday. The reason a lot of youth is in their grave because of disobedience and a lack of honor of parents. Many youth dying prematurely. You know, there's probably more youth dying than elderly people today. Well, the Bible tells us why they are dying premature. Ephesians 6 verses 1 through 3 declares, Children, obey your parents in Yahweh, for this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. This is the first commandment we're promised. If you keep this commandment, Yahweh will promise you long life that it may be well with thee and thou mayest live long on the earth. Some wonder why these children dying in their youth, coming up dead, just falling dead, healthy children, just collapsing, ladies and gentlemen. Falling dead on the basketball court, on the football field, ladies and gentlemen. Wondering why, ladies and gentlemen. You ever wonder why these children are disobedient to their parents and they don't honor and they don't respect their parents? Proverbs 29 and 15 declares, The rod and reproof give wisdom. But a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. Most children today are left alone to raise themselves. You must keep a watchful eye on children today. Just two minutes out of your presence, they can get themselves in a lot of mess. This is why a lot of young girls are getting pregnant. This is why children having sex at a young age. 
The children are neglected. Their parents leave them alone and let them raise themselves. They don't watch them. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to watch your children with their brothers and sisters. You have to keep an eye. You got to watch them like a hawk. You let them out of your presence, they can harm themselves. They can swallow poison. Ladies and gentlemen, they can be kidnapped. Amen. And they can get involved in perversion and drugs, gang activity. Glory to Yahweh. See, listen, I grew up in the 60s. I was born in the 60s, ladies and gentlemen. And I know what we did then. Can you imagine what children are doing today? They getting involved in pornography, all kind of things. Then you give your child a phone. That's the worst thing you can ever do is give your child a phone. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old got their own phone. Are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? My goodness. Second Kings chapter two. We're going to see a scenario here where children were left by themselves. Their parents wasn't watching them. Ladies and gentlemen, their parents neglected their responsibilities and apparently these children was not taught anything. They have no home training, ladies and gentlemen, and it caused them dearly. In the book of 2 Kings, look what it says here. In the book of 2 Kings chapter number 2, this should put some fear in anyone's heart, ladies and gentlemen. 2 Kings chapter 2, and let me start with verse 23. Listen to what it says. This is Elisha, and he went up from thence unto Bethel. And as he was going up by the way, there came forth little children. These were little children. I mean, these was children 7, 6, 5, 8, 9. Look at this. Little children. It says, and there came forth little children out of the city. Where was their parents? How was these children able to leave the city without their parents knowing it? Where was their parents at? This mishap wouldn't have never took place if their parents was keeping a watchful eye on them. Look. And mocked him. These children mocked the man of Yahweh. No respect whatsoever disrespectful and mocked him and said unto him go up thou bald head go up thou bald head no doubt Elijah had a receding hairline ladies and gentlemen and these children seen they thought well he looked like bozo or something they thought it was funny and they began to mock him go up you bald head you Ball head man, Mr. Smart, uh, Mr. Clean, go up. Now look at verse 24. And he turned back and looked on them and cursed them in the name of Yahweh. And there came forth two she bears, two she bears out of the wood and tear 40 and two children of them. Tore them up. I mean, demolish them. Ladies and gentlemen, tore the limbs apart. Tore the heads off. 42 children. I guarantee that was, that was a sad, there was some sad funerals. But who could you blame? Who would you blame? The parents, the parents, for not teaching them right, for neglecting their responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, Proverbs 22 and 5 says, train up a child the way that he should go. And when he get old, he won't depart from it. Deuteronomy chapter number 6. And I want to begin reading with verse 
number six. Listen what it says. Now, this is our responsibility, parents. This is our responsibility. All us parents, this is our responsibility. It tells us, I just read in Proverbs 22 and 5, our responsibility is to train up a child the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart from it. That's a promise, ladies and gentlemen. So we train them in the way of Yahweh. Train them up in the admonition, ladies and gentlemen, in the nurture of Yahweh. Okay, verse 6, it says, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart, Yahweh's commandments. And look what we should, should supposed to do with them. And thou shalt teach them diligently. Don't just teach them, but we're supposed to teach them diligently unto thy children. You know, my daughter, she loves to write. And you know what I'm teaching her? You know what I'm teaching her? You like to write so much. So get the Bible and start writing word from word from the Bible. Write it on your little tablet, word from word, word from word. Listen, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and and shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, the commandments of Yahweh. And when thou walkest by the way, when you go to the park, you're supposed to be talking about Yahweh. When you go to the grocery store, when you go to the mall, wherever you got to pay your bills or whatever, you doing your affairs during the day. And when thou lies down, when you get ready to go to bed, Give them some scripture. And when thou rises up, when you get, wake up in the morning, that putting that word back on them. Do we do that? That's what the Bible say we supposed to do. We supposed to put that word on those children. Talk about Yahweh. Talk about his word. Uh, it was Joshua said in, in the book of um, Joshua 24 and 15, as for me and my house, we shall serve Yahweh. We gonna serve Yahweh in our house. Glory to Yahweh. Now, today, people have forgotten about the art of correction and discipline to their children. They don't even spank them no more. Bible call it a rod. Or they don't use a switch or branch when I was coming up, we got switches, branches, belts, extension cords. Oh my goodness, I didn't like them extension cords. My goodness. But I tell you what, it put some fear of Yahweh in you. Amen. Water pipe, whatever our parents can, sometimes even a broomstick. They get hands on. Glory to Yahweh. They discipline us. They taught us, ladies and gentlemen. But these children today, Christians don't discipline their children. They afraid of the government. Well, the government says, you know, the child protection people, they can come get us. You know, yeah, use wisdom. You don't, you, you're supposed to beat your children. I don't care what the government say. You got to obey Yahweh rather than man. When anytime man's laws contradict Yahweh's laws, you forget about them. You forget about them. Ladies and gentlemen, Yahweh's law come first. And Yahweh tell us to beat them. Huh? Put the rod on them. Discipline the children. We time them, put them in time out. Oh, go in time out. Huh? What that's going to do for a child? Eventually, they're going to put you in time out. If they don't jump on you and beat you first, or beat you down first. Children today beating up their parents. Giving them black eyes, breaking their limbs. It's amazing, friend. Children beating their children down. Glory to Yahweh. Just beating them down. You better shut up. You say something else. Be quiet. Be quiet. I said be quiet. I won't hear no more now. Oh, them children, boy, they something. They rude. They off the chain. They out of control. There's some wicked children today. I blame the, ch the parents. Most of these parents need somebody to put them across their knee and get a rod and beat the mess out of them. Beat the mess out of the parents, ladies and gentlemen. Let me read this in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 13. Let's look at Proverbs 
chapter number 13. And I want to draw your attention to verse number 24. Okay? Proverbs chapter 13. If I get there someday. Amen. Proverbs chapter 13. Okay. Now let's look at verses number uh, 24. Look what it says here. It says, He that spares his rod hates his son. I don't want to beat him. I feel so sorry for these children. I don't want to beat him. I don't like to see them crying. It hurts my heart. It just breaks my heart to see my children crying. I don't, I, I just don't like to see them cry. I just talk to them. That ain't Yahweh's way. He said, look what he said. In verse 24, it says, He that spares his rod, hates his child. You hate your child if you spare the rod. You hate it. That's what Yahushua said. That's what Yahweh said through Solomon. You hate your children if you spare the rod. He, but he that loveth him, chasing him be times. That means you don't wait long to beat him. You jump right on him if you're in a situation where you can't. Now, I would advise any one of you, don't. If you live in an apartment complex, you got to find the right time to discipline because these, these wicked folks will report you to child protection. Yeah. So you have to, amen, take them or, uh, uh, or somewhere, amen, where no one can hear you beating them. Glory to Yahweh. You have to use a lot of discretion and wisdom that they don't do. I, 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 don't you do it in the public. They'll lock you up. You know, in certain states, they give children these little wrist monitors. And if the child feel like the parent is abusing them, all they do you have to do is push them. And here go the child protected people come right out, ladies and gentlemen. It's amazing. And children today can divorce their parents. They can divorce the parents. He despairs his rod, hates his son, but he that loveth him, chasing him, be times. Now look at Proverbs 22 and 15. You know, Proverbs got a lot to say about this, but I'm going to just read a few of these scriptures. Proverbs 22 and 15. Look what it says here. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. Your child ain't got nothing but nonsense and foolishness in their heart. A lot of foolishness. But but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Listen, the rod of correction. You may not think that that rod is helping your children. That you might, you don't think, oh man, it seems like, man, the more I beat them, the worse they get. You happen them. You keep on. You keep on. Praise the name of Yahweh. Um. Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Um, Proverbs 23 and 13. Withhold not correction from thy child, for if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. He shall not die. Thou shalt beat him with the rod, and shall deliver his soul from hell. You beat them with the rod, you will deliver their soul from hell. And the Bible tells us don't spare for their crying. Children are very manipulative. They will manipulate you. They'll make all that noise, screaming and hollering, having fits, ladies and gentlemen. Trying to manipulate you, but you got to look over that. You got to go past that, and you must, amen, discipline them. Let me read this in Proverbs 29 and 17. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Oh, if you correct him, he'll give you rest. Amen. 
You give you rest. If you, they go to the prisons, they join those gangs, and you can't even sleep at night. You wondering about your children, huh? Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Bless Yahweh. Well, I'm going to close here. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again with another message from the word of Yahweh. This is Yahweh's servant, Reginald M. Graham. We thank Yahweh for you tuning in with us once again. We would appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe. Also, send your comments. We'd like to hear your thoughts. We'd like to hear amen from you. Well, until next time, may Yahweh continue to bless you and smile on you is our prayers. Peace and blessings. Shalom. Shut up.